Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller films from 2023, titled Little Bone Lodge. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. In the opening scene of the movie, the narrator tells us of the powerful notion that a loving mother's deep-rooted instinct to protect her children can transform her into a fierce guardian, willing to sacrifice anything for their well-being. She can be glorious or terrible, and if anyone were to ever harm her family, there's no telling what she'd be capable of. The story begins with a woman named Rose, braving the rain as she approaches her home. She locks the door to the building next to her house which is secured with multiple locks, emphasizing the secretive nature of her actions. In the dining room of the house, Rose's daughter, Maisie, is engrossed in decorating a cake. It becomes apparent that Maisie's efforts are intended for someone special, and soon we discover that the recipient is a man in a wheelchair, her father. We learn that the father, Pa, is unable to speak or move, requiring Rose to inject him with medication daily. Maisie blows out the candle on the cake, and the joyous atmosphere envelops the room. She presents her father with his gifts, and eagerly joins him for a photograph. Amid the festivities, Maisie dutifully administers Pa's medication, and feeds him a slice of cake, showing the deep bond between them. And then all of a sudden, a desperate stranger bangs on their door, pleading for help. He recounts an accident in the forest, that has left his brother severely wounded and bleeding. Rose, hesitant but moved by the plea for assistance, reluctantly opens the door to let them in. She examines the injured man's wounds, and urges his brother to take him to a hospital. However, fearing the raging storm outside, the brother insists on seeking aid from Rose. The concerned brother anxiously paces the floor while Maisie, despite her trepidation, offers her assistance. With torrential rain pouring down, Rose tends to the injured man, stitching up his wounds on the dining table. During their conversation, the brother introduces himself as Maddie, and Rose and Maisie reciprocate with their names. As Rose tends to Maddie's injuries, she reassures him that his brother will be alright. Maddie retreats to the bathroom to wash off the blood, and he hides his knife in his sock. I don't fear the fire, because I am the fire. Returning to the dining room, Maddie finds his brother resting on the couch. Grateful for Rose's help, he expresses his gratitude. Rose's motherly nature leads her to warmly invite Maddie to enjoy the soup that Maisie has prepared, prompting a series of questions about Maddie's journey and background. They discover that he hails from London, and Maddie explains that they are headed to some place where Jack's friend has been waiting with a boat. However, Maddie seems kinda nervous to reveal the place or their true objective, until his brother, Jack, who has regained consciousness, replies that they are going fishing. During their conversation, Jack tells the family that he must inform the people who are waiting for them that they are okay, but Rose tells him there is no signal in the area, and they don't have a phone either. Rose tells Jack that there is an old phone booth on the way to the village, but she can't take him there until the next morning because it is storming that night. Hearing this, Jack asks to use the restroom, and Maddie sends him. However, inside the toilet, Jack is shocked to discover that they've brought the wrong bag. We soon learn that the two brothers were involved in some illicit activities, and had made off with a large sum of money. Since the money bag is still in their crashed car, they need to figure out a way to retrieve it. Therefore, Jack asks Rose to let him borrow her car, while Maddie pretends to throw a tantrum. Jack says Maddie has left his stuff in the car, and he's not going to stop until he gets it back. When Rose sees that Maddie won't stop yelling, she offers to send Jack to the crashed car with one condition. Maddie must wait for them inside a locked room, since the mother won't leave her daughter with a man she doesn't know in the house. Moments after Jack and Rose leave, Maisie takes the key and has a conversation with Maddie. She's never talked to anyone before except her mother. After a pleasant conversation, Maisie unlocks the door, and when she brings Maddie outside, he asks Maisie to take him upstairs. Upstairs, Maddie finds a locked room, and Maisie says it's her mother's workshop, no one is allowed up there. The scene shifts to Jack and Rose, they are having a conversation when Rose reveals about her husband's accident, and the heartbreaking loss of her son. Once they get to the accident site, Jack asks Rose to wait for him while he grabs his money bag. And this is when Rose unintentionally notices that there is a dead man inside the wrecked vehicle. Due to this, 
Things become a little tense when Jack pulls out his gun, and forces Rose to bring her to the phone booth so he can talk to his guy. Rose obeys his command, and when they arrive at the phone booth, Jack warns her to keep silent about what she has witnessed. He tells the mother he's done horrible things she can't imagine, but she responds that Jack has no idea what she's been through. Back at home, Maisie invites Maddie into her room, showing him her cherished possessions, including a map that allows her to travel the world without leaving the house. From their conversation, it is revealed that Jack is talking to his boss about sending the money bag. The boss, who can't wait anymore, says that he's the one who will come to meet Jack to take the bag. Here we learn that the dead man inside the crashed car is the boss's son, but Jack lies, telling the boss that his son is fine. In the meantime, Rose tries to grab a tool to defend herself, but Jack suddenly appears from behind and warns the mother how brutal the boss will be if he finds out his son is dead. But the mother responds this. He touches my family. I'll kill you. <laughs> Back to Maddie and Maisie, as their bond strengthens, they suddenly hear a news report from the radio, revealing the search for three men involved in an armed raid in East London. Hearing his and his brother's names on the radio, Maddie attempts to silence the radio, and struggles to explain to Maisie that it wasn't him and that it was an accident. Despite her own apprehensions, Maisie understands, and encourages Maddie to return to his room before her mother returns. The climax erupts as Rose and Jack return home, and Jack orders Maisie to let Maddie out of the room. The family is separated and threatened at gunpoint, with their lives hanging in the balance. All of a sudden, Jack sees a headlight, and when he goes to check, it's a cop. After instructing Maddie and Maisie to hide in the locked room, Jack gives Rose strict instructions to greet the police without raising suspicion. A twist of fate leads to a police officer coming into the house to check on the occupants, and inform Rose about the manhunt. During this time, Rose tries to act normally, but the father's suspicious gaze draws attention from the cop. The cop also notices the photo of the father and Maisie, which appears to have been cropped, and then Pa weakly calls for help. As the policeman grows increasingly suspicious of Rose, she claims that Pa will act this way if there's a delay in his medication. Before leaving, the cop suddenly asks why a picture of a girl who went missing a long time ago, aka Maisie, is in her house, and he claims that the girl's family disappeared too. But then this happens. <sighs> Jack emerges from behind and attacks the policeman. Chaos ensues, with a gunfire and brawls filling the room. Maddie hears the commotion from inside, while Maisie seizes the opportunity to strike him with a vase. In the end, the cop manages to subdue Jack, and this is when he is shocked to see Maisie. In an unexpected turn of events, Rose emerges and shoots the policeman dead. Maisie finds herself torn and confused by the unfolding events, while Rose quickly injects Pa with medication after Maisie claims that the father just spoke. Afterwards, Rose cleans up the mess methodically, imprisoning Jack and Maddie in the basement. With Maisie's unwitting assistance, the family tries to hide their tracks by bringing the dead cop to the scene of Jack's accident. She makes a fake scene that makes it look like the policeman died in a gunfight with Jack's gang. Rose also assures Maisie that the police aren't good, no one is good, and that's why she needs to shield Maisie from them. Locked in the basement, Jack struggles to break free from his restraints. Jack and Maddie finally free themselves from the cuff, and try to get out of the basement. They escape from another door outside the house, but Jack doesn't want to leave because the bag of money is in the house. As they make their daring escape, a dilemma arises, Maddie wants to leave the treacherous house, but Jack wants to retrieve the bag of money that obviously holds great significance. This leads to an intense clash between the siblings, where we discover that Maddie has a mental condition that often forces him into a fit of rage and hallucinations. Jack informs Maddie that they lost their mother because of his mental condition, and tells Maddie to wait for him in the barn. He is driven by greed as he climbs toward Rose's mysterious workshop, and enters it through the window. Inside the room, he discovers a hidden area, and a lady who is lying there. There are a number of CCTV screens set up in front of the woman. But the crazy part is when he figures out that the lady has been amputated, revealing Rose's true monstrous nature. He learns the truth about how Rose is not Maisie's true mother when he sees a lot of newspaper articles about Maisie's family who have gone missing. To add, the lady who is lying there is Maisie's real mother, and Pa's wife. Maisie, aka Jenny, her real name, had no recollection of her real family because she was too young when they went missing. When Jack tries to rescue her, the woman instead begs Jack to end her misery. 
her pleas to help her sleep weigh heavily on Jack, but he hesitates to take action. Meanwhile, Rose is seen outside the house, and then she senses something is amiss when she sees her sheep running around outside. At this point, she realizes that the two brothers have escaped. Maddie, on the other hand, hides in the barn, only to be confronted by Rose wielding a gun. Rose decides not to harm this boy, saying that Maddie reminds her of her late son, and that she will look after him. Hearing this, Maddie accepts Rose as her new mother. In the meantime, Jack manages to find another entrance into the house, retrieves the money, and restrains Maisie from behind, desperately trying to convince her of the truth about Rose. As Rose heads toward the house, Jack leads Maisie into a room. Here Jack reveals to Maisie that her true identity is Jenny, and Rose is not her real mother. Her real mother was driving a car that collided with Rose's car that night, killing her husband and son, so Rose took Maisie and her father to replace her family as payback. He gives her the photos and necklace he got from Rose's workshop, which ignite Maisie's memories. Amidst the chaos, Jack's boss stumbles upon the wreckage of a car, and realizes he is getting close to Jack. As Jack is thinking of an escape route, he instructs Maisie to guide her father towards a truck while he retrieves Maddie. Unfortunately, Maddie is no longer in the barn, and his absence raises concerns. Jack is unwilling to leave without him, so he re-enters the house, encountering Maddie at the top of the stairs. But Maddie tells Jack to leave, while he'll be staying with her new mother. Rose then takes a shot at a distracted Jack, narrowly grazing his neck. Jack hides in a corner while Rose tells Maddie that Jack doesn't care about him. In a dramatic confrontation, Jack reveals that he has revealed Rose's dark deeds in her workshop to Maisie. Enraged, Rose tries to coerce Jack into surrendering, but he strikes her across the face, and seizes her fallen gun. But Jack's attempt to end Rose's reign is thwarted when Maddie intervenes, pushing Jack to the ground and delivering a series of punches. As Maddie helps Rose to her feet, Maisie enters the house, offering assistance to Jack as they make their way to the waiting car. Simultaneously, Jack's boss who spotted the car wreckage draws nearer to the scene. Jack and Maisie escape while Rose pursues them, wielding a gun. Seeking safety, they seek refuge in the barn, with Rose desperately trying to convince Maisie that she's the one who raised her and cared for her. Suddenly, a car arrives at the compound, announced by Maddie as Mac. Jack hands Maisie the car key, instructing her to drive away with her father, while he heads in the opposite direction to meet Mac. With tensions escalating, Mac confronts Jack, demanding his money and information on his missing son. When he learns his son has died, Mac drags Jack out of hiding, confronts Rose about his need for the money, and wants to murder both brothers for causing his son's death. Rose says he can kill Jack if he wants to, and she doesn't want the money either, but he's not touching Maddie. During the confrontation, Jack stabs Mac in the leg, triggering Rose to shoot Mac in the head, while Maddie prevents the boss's man from killing Rose. The attacker is able to overpower Maddie and Rose, and tries to kill Rose again. And then this happens. In a brave move, Maisie hits the attacker, and then drives away with her father, leaving Rose, Jack, and Maddie unconscious. As the movie draws to an end, Maisie finds solace in a blanket, as a police officer assures her that Pa will be okay, and promises to apprehend the escaped Rose. Meanwhile, Rose and her new son, Maddie, are seen dining together in their new secluded house. The mother looks at the CCTV, while behind the screen is Jack, who is in a hauntingly familiar position. His limbs have been amputated, mirroring the fate of Maisie's real mother. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Little Bone Lodge 2023. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.